Morning all. The first game of the World Chess Championship, long awaited between the number one rated player in the world and the current world champion. So Magnus Carlsen, the number one rated, Vichy Anand, the current world champion. Uh, Magnus Carlsen playing white in this game. Uh, he kicked off with knight f3. This is the Retty opening, after, named after Richard Retty, one of the leading hypermodernists. He believed that uh, the occupation in the centre wasn't a requirement. Sometimes you can just, for example, wait for the opponent to occupy the centre and undermine it and attack it later from, from a distance, often employing Fianchetto's bishops. Here, black states a claim in the centre, occupying, and then we see this Fianchetto bishop, and black also Fianchetto's his bishop. Bishop g2, bishop g7. Standard position, d4. And now most often played as knight f6, but we see uh, here c6. Knight f6 has been seen on my live book over 1700 times. C6 just a hundred times. So c6 looks a bit like a, a Slav structure to blunt the bishop on g2. So pretty solid stuff. White castled here. Vichy and now played knight f6. And now the most usual move in this position is actually c4 by by some distance, 344 games. Uh, but the move b3 is second uh, most popular for my live book. It's actually been played about 58 times before. And we also have knight bd2. But uh, OK, b3. So a double Fianchetto system. Uh, black castled. And now, uh, again, c4 is quite, quite a normal move here, apparently, but bishop b2 was played. And we saw quite an aggressive um, place for the bishop now, bishop f5, coming out to f5. And now Magnus played c4. Although it's the most common move in this position, that's just before we get into c4. Uh, just put on the kibitzer here. Is c4 actually strictly necessary? If white wanted to be uh, more creative than what's been played before, uh, maybe knight c3. It looks it looks interesting. Knight c3 could have some interesting ideas. Uh, just for example, queen d2 and knight h4 later. Maybe try to to strike uh, in the centre with prepared e4. So that's an interesting idea. Uh, so, but c4 looks looks fairly standard, but it, it is a bit of a double-edged sword, you know, putting a pawn on c4. It's potentially uh, weakening white a little bit. If black's got the option to take it and have white ha has these these pawns, which are potentially a target, especially the c4 pawn with the bishop fianchetto here, is is potentially a little bit vulnerable. And in this position, okay, we see uh, knight bd7. And in in this position, black is potentially threatening now taking and to attack the pawn. Uh, given that's the case, uh, white could consider perhaps taking on d5 here. But it looks very, very uh, sterile and symmetrical pawn structure. If, if cd, this, this looks quite uninspiring structurally. I don't think white can claim any advantage there. So Magnus played actually. Uh, just knight c3 here, but uh, now Vichy uh, forced matters in this position. Uh, he played actually d takes c4, so he's making that c4 pawn vulnerable now, and he just immediately attacks it with knight b6. Uh, what else can black actually do though, apart from knight b6? It's quite a forcing move. Uh, it's probably one of the better moves. The engines actually really quite like knight b6. If queen a5, let's say queen b3, I think white has a little bit of pressure in this position, uh, a little bit uh, less comfortable for black than maybe Rishi would like. Here again, if white wants to play actively knight h4, this might actually promise a tiny advantage even with that slightly vulnerable uh, 
C pawn, it does support D5 here. So this is all very interesting complications, but uh, understandably, perhaps, uh, in this position, uh, we should just carry on with knight B6. And there's no amazing way of defending uh, C4 here. Uh, if knight D2, this is a disaster, because uh, the queen takes D4, so that's that's quickly ruled out. There's no there's no major uh, compensatory uh, tactic in this position. The, the bishop's loose. There's no knight D5 or anything. Um, nothing major going on there. And if queen B3, this is this is more interesting. If queen B3 was played, and now actually apparently Vichy was expecting queen B3. If Black tries to gang up on the C4 pawn now with bishop E6. Uh, this is an interesting variation uh, with d5 uh, sacking a pawn c takes c takes and here if if bishop takes then knight takes is actually quite good for white this position this is actually quite good compensation uh, potentially this kind of position uh, even though uh, whites are pawned down uh, White has potential ideas of uh, just just you know the bishop targeting b7, that pressure on the a file uh, or knight e5. There's there's quite a bit of pressure that can be put on black here, which might compensate for the pawn. But it's even this, it's it's complicated uh, even after queen d5. But after uh, let's after knight takes d5, queen d5. Let's go back. Cd in this variation, knight takes knight g5. If knight takes knight g5 is interesting here, and this is just uh, a very complicated position where white is actually technically doing okay uh, for the gambited pawn. Uh, if, for example, taking here structural damage for black, white's got the bishop pair. Uh, this this should be uh, okay for white. So maybe it was possible. It doesn't look that convincing, though, uh, reaching this position. It maybe was possible to play this move, queen b3, uh, inviting this bishop e6 with this pawn sacrifice idea. I'm not sure if this was outside of Magnus's preparation, uh, if this had been prepared that much. Um, it, it does seem a bit strange to to want to you know go into for this uh, pawn sacrifice. So bishop e6. But you know what else is there here if the pawn sacrifice is not used? That if um, this this d pawn is is loose, so there's no no easy way of protecting c4. Um, on on knight d2 in this position though, uh, perhaps not queen takes d4 here. Knight C E four that might be something, but uh, even even here, Knight takes C four and then B five is is quite good for Black as well. So okay, so Magnus is basically uh, in this position. He he's forced to play what looks to be a horrible move in many respects to play because it sort of gives up control a bit of the D five square, and it also encourages a seemingly useful uh, forcing move. Knight c4, so asking the bishop to do something on on b2. White doesn't want to give up that dark square bishop. If white tries to protect the dark square bishop, this is just going to be uh, surely better for for black. In fact, black doesn't even have to take uh, this off. Uh, can play things like just knight d7, for example, threatening to take it off, or even just e5. So this is quite unpleasant uh, to have that sort of passive position. Uh, so the bishop actually just retreated to c1, and it doesn't look to be to be quite honest that inspiring for White. White doesn't seem to have much of a fun game here with many opportunities to win right now. Um, Vichy played knight d5, another forcing move, hitting the knight now on c3, and perhaps. Mangus had been initially considering what well he said he said in, in in the interview after that he maybe queen e1 but then he realized that in in this position to defend the knight like this gives black a, a powerful move in his view which was knight b4 simply threatening knight c2 
does Falking Queen and Rook here? And what does actually what does actually White do in this position? Um, pardon me. Against Knight C2, if Queen D1, then Black does seem to have a nice position here. Uh, he can either like try and get a repetition like this, just just going back if he wanted, or even more ambitious uh, in this position, Queen E1. Instead of going back to F5, Black could try and break up White Center with the move E5 here, and this should give Black a, an advantage. It's quite passive here for White, very passive indeed. Uh, White doesn't really want to extend the scope with the bishop on g7, for example. This just looks quite bad. So this kind of stuff with queen e1 is to be avoided, it seems. Uh, so after knight d5, so this move queen e1 again, it's it's like vast complications which which could be implied by this. After knight b4, he just plays a much safer move, queen b3 so not only protecting his knight but attacking the knight on c4 and now again complications could be invoked from black by playing uh, a move like b5 uh, how would white deal with a move like b5 if c takes b then black's best is actually probably just just to play knight a5 here uh, and if queen queen b2 a takes, it looks as though this this is inviting complications again with e4, and we can get a line like this. It's, it's a bit crazy this this sort of stuff, and it's it's still not it's not really clear who's um, who's better here. Maybe black's like slightly better in in this kind of crazy position so crazy stuff behind the scenes but um Vichy didn't want to go in for this b5 he f he assumed that um he thought engines interesting w interestingly would would think black was better because it's got more because black has one more advanced piece than white that was an interesting view on engine evaluation uh here if on c takes b uh, a more simplistic continuation like knight d takes b6 white actually is better you know structurally with a target on c6 this is not something uh black would want to go in for at all uh white white is definitely a little bit better here with with long term pressure so no vichy did the safest thing uh possible here so instead of that b5 um taking on c3 um Let's have a quick look at this before looking at Vichy's continuation. This this is quite interesting. There's an interesting line here that actually, if um, well, Queen takes c3 is is actually okay for White. If White wanted to try Queen takes c4, which looks more ambitious in in some respects, um, this this might be actually okay. Bishop takes d4 looks like a neat uh, tactic, though. Uh, the point is here: if knight takes, then queen takes. So it's it's nabbing a pawn. If if queen takes here, knight takes, and then getting the queen back. So uh, that makes queen uh, takes c4 look a, look a bit uh, unsound. This bishop takes d4 is a powerful uh, tactic here. But uh, I think the reason why knight takes c3 is not that good is actually queen takes c3, uh, and now uh, this this position will be uh, again comfortable for white. Um, so Vichy's decision actually was actually just to uh, in this position to attack the white queen with knight a5. Uh, the white queen has to stand guard over the c3 knight. Um, and uh, in the game, we saw actually Queen A3 standing guard, guard like that, and Vichy had uh, the luxury of being able to uh, just attack the Queen again uh, repetitively. So again, Knight A5, Knight C4, and a draw by threefold repetition. 
Okay, may it may not be the most exciting ever uh, first game of a World Championship match, but uh, both players uh, settling in. Uh, some interesting variations behind the scenes, but um, they all imply an element of risk. Um, I mean, both players were happy just just to draw here uh, to settle in, and um, hopefully, um, games over the next few rounds will be much more interesting uh, than this generally. Okay, comments or questions on YouTube? Thanks very much.